almost uh, seven years ago now, uh, I started this most incredible journey called Amazon.com. Actually, at that time, it wasn't even called Amazon.com. It was called Cadabra Inc., as in Abracadabra. That was the original name of the company. And I had phoned uh, a lawyer on the way to Seattle from a cell phone. And uh, he said, well, what do you, to incorporate the company? He said, what do you want the company to be called? And I said, Cadabra. And he said, Cadaver? And I knew that was a bad name. Um, we changed it a few months later. The, the wake-up call that led to starting Amazon.com was finding that web usage in the spring of 1994 was growing at 2,300% a year. And things just do not grow that fast. Uh, outside of, I guess, usually like petri dishes or something. I mean, it's a very, very unusual growth rate. And uh, you could tell anecdotally, even though there wasn't good uh, research on this at the time, that the baseline of web usage wasn't trivial. Uh, and so something with a non-trivial baseline growing at 2,300% a year uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is clearly going to be everywhere tomorrow. And so the question was, what kind of business plan would make sense in the context of that growth? And uh, I went through a whole bunch of different things and made a list of 20 different products looking for the first best product to sell online. Came up with books for a bunch of reasons, but primarily because books are very unusual in one respect, and that is that there are more of them than there are products of any other category. So there are literally millions of different books in print at any given time, and uh, computers are good at organizing such large selections of products, and, and uh, you could build something online that literally couldn't be built uh, any other way. You couldn't have a physical world bookstore or a paper catalog with millions of different books. Uh, and the primitive technology that was the web in 1994 clearly required that kind of uh, uh, characteristic for a business. It had to be something that could only be done in that way. So that's what led to books. When I uh, uh, decided to do this, I, I first talked to my, my wife who is sitting here in the audience and uh, she had married a uh, you know, relatively stable, goofy, but still relatively stable a person working at a Wall Street firm. I worked at a quantitative hedge fund, and uh, this was a hard decision. And I, I was looking for the right framework in which to make that kind of important decision. And, 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 and the right framework I found is a regret minimization framework. And I, so that's just a nerdy way of saying that you want to project yourself to age 80. And then think back over your life, and, and if, you're, if, you're, if you're 80, what are the th you want to minimize the number of regrets you have throughout that period of time. I think this is something a lot of people do, uh, maybe uh, subconsciously, they probably, very few people probably name it regret minimization framework because most people are healthier than that. <laughs> but, but it was uh, a very clear way for me to think about making that kind of life decision. Uh, and, the, and, and, and the way it helped was, I, I thought, okay, if I go do this thing and participate in this thing called the internet that I genuinely believe is going to be a big deal, and if I fail, am I going to regret having tried and failed? And I knew the answer to that was no. But I also knew that if I didn't try, that I would always regret that. I would always wonder and it would haunt me uh, in, until that you know, mythical day, which I actually hope will come. My wife has tried to get me to eat better. Um, one of her heroes is Dr. Weil, so if you're in the audience, uh, your, 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 your dietary constraints are currently being inflicted upon me. Um, um, it, but I suspect it may help me uh, over the long term. And uh, so that, that, was a, uh, that was how the decision was made to go do this. And there are just literally tons of stories about the early days of getting Amazon.com set up. You know, we, we spent about a year uh, building the software infrastructure and getting all the vendor relationships in place and so on and so on. Um, the day before we were ready to launch the store in July of, of uh, 1995, uh, one of the software engineers, we were looking at our little 400 square foot distribution center. And I remember very clearly this person looked at this 400 square feet is about the size of one car garage. So it was a kind of a toy distribution center and, and, and although there were real software systems behind it. And uh, he said, he looked at this little space and he said, I can't figure out 
if this is incredibly optimistic or hopelessly pathetic. Um, and indeed, we didn't know. There really was no way to know uh, how customers were going to adopt this kind of technology in these very early days. Uh, there was a lot of uh, risk involved. In fact, also in the audience today are my parents who uh, were the original funders of Amazon.com. They invested about $300,000, which is roughly their, uh, you know, was, a, was a, a reasonably large fraction of their life savings. And, uh, you know, my dad's first question was, what's the internet? So they were not, uh, you know, betting on the concept or the idea. They were betting on their son. I told him I thought there was a 70% chance they would lose their entire investment that that was an important disclosure because I wanted to be able to go home for Thanksgiving dinner no matter what happened. Um, I'm very happy that the, that investment has worked out very well for them. But it was a, uh, a uh, uh, you know, I was giving myself triple the normal odds. Startup companies are very tricky things and, uh, you know, fewer than 10% of them actually go on to make any return on an investment at all. And so I was giving myself a 30% chance. It was wildly overconfident. But, uh, but things actually worked out. You know, the planets aligned in those early days. And startup companies need early planetary alignment because there are so many things that can go wrong. And when we launched that store in July of 1995, we were shocked at the customer response. Uh, you know, literally in the first 30 days, we had orders from all 50 states and 45 different countries. Uh, and we were woefully unprepared from an operational point of view to handle that kind of volume. And uh, in fact, the, 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 we, this, we quickly expanded, we talked to our landlord and we expanded into a 2,000 square foot uh, basement warehouse space that had six foot ceilings. One of our 10 employees was 6'2". Um, he went around like this the whole time. And, and, um, uh, and we, were, we, were, we were doing our day jobs, which might have been you know, computer programming and, and all the different things that 10 people will do in a little tiny startup company. And then we would spend all afternoon and into the wee hours of the morning packing up the orders and shipping them out. Uh, there, you know, I would drive these things to UPS and so we'd get the last one and we'd wait to the last second. I'd get to UPS and I'd sort of bang on the glass door that was closed and they always would take pity on me um, and sort of open up and let us you know, ship things late. Uh, we had so many orders that we weren't ready for that we had, a, uh, 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 we had no real organization in our distribution centers at all. In fact, we didn't um, we were packing on our hands and knees on a hard concrete floor. And the, uh, the, the, I remember just to show you how stupid I can be. I was, you know, it, it, my only defense is that it was late. But I, we were packing these things, everybody, everybody in the company. And, the, uh, and I had this brainstorm. And as I said to the person next to me, this packing is killing me. You know, my back hurts. This is killing my knees on this, this hard cement floor. And the person said, yeah, I know what you mean. And I said, you know what we need? This is my brilliant insight. We need knee pads. <laughs> I was very serious. And, and um, this person looked at me like I was the stupidest person they'd ever seen. They're like, I'm working for this person. This is great. And um, said, what we need is packing tables. And I, I looked at this, <laughs> I looked at this person and I thought that was the smartest idea I'd ever heard. The, the next day we got packing tables and I think we doubled our productivity. Um, that early stage, by the way, of Amazon.com where we were so unprepared is probably one of the luckiest things that ever happened to us because it formed a culture of customer service in every department of the company, every single person in the company, because we had to work with our hands so close to the customers, making sure those orders went out, uh, really set up a culture that served us well. And that is our goal to be Earth's most customer-centric company.